guys, my name is Shay and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reviewing Legacies Season 3, Episode 4. Hold on tight. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get it. The episode starts off with Hope waking up and Landon surprising her with breakfast in bed. She asks him what is the occasion and he tells her that it is their one year anniversary. He tells her that he has a whole date planned with dinner and dancing in the square. She tells him that she wants to make tonight special. She says she's ready and he tells her he's ready too. Landon tells her he loves her and they kiss and it's a really sweet handy moment. At Mystic Falls, Josie is interviewing Ethan for an assignment. He tells her that he's been trying to pitch a day in the life of the stallion to the school paper, but Alaric never called him back. She tells him that if the assignment goes well, maybe it will open some doors for him. He tells her that he could use some good PR because colleges have stopped calling him when he hurt his arm. Josie apologizes and he tells her that it isn't her fault and he was obviously compelled because he doesn't remember Josie breaking his arm. He tells her to tell Lark that he sucks for ghosting the school and now they have a new school principal. She says that he will see him first and that his mom and Alaric have gotten pretty close. He mentions how disturbing that is and he tells Josie to take care of herself and he leaves. The necromancer is in a classroom and he is splitting blood on the floor in the shape of a symbol. The school's new principal comes into the room and asks the necromancer what is he doing and he replies that he is consecrating the space. The principal tells him to leave and the necromancer does a spell that kills him. Josie sees this from the hallway and she leaves. Alaric returns to the Salvatore school and Josie lets him know about the necromancer doing a blood ritual and that everyone at the school is in danger. He tells her to go inside and that he is going to fight the bottle, fix the problem, and erase the evidence. They see a zombie dragon fly over the school and Josie asks how do they erase that. MG tells Alyssa that whatever she is planning, she doesn't have to do it. She tells him that he doesn't have to keep pulling at the ropes because they are soaked in river vein. She slits her wrist with a knife and lets her blood drop into the pit. He tells her to talk to him before she makes a mistake that she is going to regret. She agrees and says that they have two minutes to talk. He asks her what does the necromancer want from her. She tells him that she is recreating the original triad spell that spawned Malivore. She tells him how they are going to raise Malivore and all of its monsters that it is consumed. He tells her the necromancer is using her. He tells her that she knows that she is mad at the world and at the school, but that he can help her. He reaches out for her hand, and she says that she can help him, and slits his wrist. She tells him that it needs the blood of a vampire, and that's why he is there. Laura is talking to the students, and he tells them the necromancer's plan. He says that they have a plan, and that they are the only world shot right now. Lizzie asks where MG is, and Caleb says that he found a note in the morning that read he was going to help Alyssa. Landon says that he wants to help, and Alara doesn't want to hear it, but soon he agrees. MG begs Alyssa to not do the spell. She tells him that the spell will kill him and that he will grow weaker with every monster that gets raised until he dies. She says that the necromancer will bring him back to life, but he will tweak some things. She says that, that, said that the necromancer will make MG love Alyssa, and I'm like, pathetic much? Like, why not have somebody who truly loves and like loves you and likes you for you? But, whatever. <laughs> he begs her to not do it again, and she drops his blood from the knife into the pit, and it begins to rise. Back in Mystic Falls, Alaric arrives, and he compels and tells Sheriff Mack to do exactly as he says. Jed, Caleb, and the rest of the Salvatore students show up. I just want to say how cool Caleb and Jed look getting out of their car. Like, they look so bad. <laughs> so bad. Sheriff Mack. Tells him that they are just kids, and Alaric replies that they are special. He tells her that it will go a lot easier if she just trusted him. She asks him what does she need from them, and he tells him to evacuate the town and have her team help his students hold the line. The monsters come out of the school, and the students are prepared to fight. Hope and Lander are in the basement, and he says that the boiler room will lead them to the school. She says that she can't risk losing him again, and he tells her that he will wait at the door. He tells her to be back in time for the date, and Hope tries to walk through, but there is a barrier spell. Landon walks through, and he convinces her to let him go and find the totem. She tells him that once he breaks the spell, to hide it once she gets there. He kisses her on the forehead, and he leaves. Josie and Lizzie are in their room, and Lizzie breaks the piggy bank and gives her the coin with her magic. She tells Josie that Alaric wants them to take down Alyssa, and that she needs her at full strength. Josie says that she doesn't trust herself with magic, and seeing Ethan at school reminded her of that. She says she isn't ready, and Lizzie tells her to do it for her. Lizzie says that Alyssa is Team Monster and that MG still hasn't come back yet. And I love I love this scene. Josie teases her and says that she is pining for MG. She disagrees and says that she's just worried about him. And I'm like, no, you have feelings for him now. And it's so cute to see. <laughs> she tells her to admit it that after all this time, he has finally won her over. Lizzie says that it's possible that after all this time, 
you know, the better a person that she has become, she has realized that not giving M MG a shot wasn't about him failing to live up to her standards, but the other way around. And I honestly love this moment so much because I love Lizzie and MGs. And it's just so beautiful to see Lizzie finally realize her true feelings for him after all this time. She says that she needs to help him because he is always there helping her. She also says that they are more powerful than they are apart. MG and Alyssa are talking and he tells her that he knows what it's like to think of yourself as a monster and to be called one by your parents. She says that him playing the mom and dad card is triggering for her because she insinuated her own. He says that he doesn't know exactly what happened with her parents, but he can guess. He says her parents saw the worst in her when they found out that she was supernatural. He says they rejected her and that hurt her, so she wanted to make sure that she shared that pain with everyone else, hoping that that would make it go away. She tells him that that is incorrect, and he tells her to prove him wrong. She says that her parents loved her and that being a witch didn't matter to them. They wanted what was best for her, but she still lost control. She says it didn't work out for them because they are dead and that MG's crappy parents are still alive. MG starts to feel pain inside his body and Alyssa says that the necromancer has raised something big. She says that she linked the portal to the crypt and that if she wanted to change her mind it's too late now. He tells her that he is not changing his mind either and that she was right and he was wrong. He says that their stories are not the same and that he had to prove his parents wrong. He tells her that she can prove hers wrong and find a way to stop it before the necromancer gets what he wants. Josie and Lizzie show up at the crib and does a spell that knocks Alyssa out. Landon is in the classroom and he sees the blood ritual. The necromancer tells him to not touch that and Landon says that he can do whatever he wants. He asks the necromancer to about his plan and he says that his plan is to have revenge. He wants to fuel a spell so powerful that it will set every monster with the Malivor loose to rain destruction upon the world. He says that he wants Malivor to consume humans the same way he consumed them and to have them all serve him. The necromancer says he has a blood sacrifice to attend and that it beats Landon's family reunion. Malivore shows up and Landon greets his dad. The necromancer tells Malivore to end Landon as he sees fit. He tells Malivore that he will be his last act of free will and that he can come to him so his eternity of misery can begin. Landon punches Malivore and tells him that he knows he wants to get back at the necromancer but just to listen to him instead of consuming him. Josie and Lizzie are talking and MG gets up. And says that he has a way of stopping stopping it, but they are not going to like it. He tells them to wake Alyssa up, and Lizzie disagrees. He tells her that Alyssa knows the spell, and that she linked it to the necromancer. MG tells her to trust him, and that Alyssa will do the right thing, and that he is betting his life on it. Landon tells Malavor that the spell did he did to raise him also made him the necromancer's servant. He says that the symbol on his head is the binding part of the spell. He says that he is someone that he, he should want to collaborate with instead of eat. He says that even though the necromancer told him to end Landon, there is a loophole and some wiggle room. He says that the Malivore created him to be a vessel and tells him to use him to free himself. He mentions how he is not mortal and that there is no symbol on his forehead binding him to the necromancer. He asks that they have a deal and holds out his hand. Hope is still downstairs and Ethan and a group of students show up. She asks him where is Landon. He tells her that he was headed to the football field and she tells him to leave. Alaric is watching the necromancer and a monster shows up and Sheriff Max shoots it. The necromancer sacrifices the students and puts their bodies in a circle on the field, making a symbol of their blood. Landon comes onto the football field and punches the necromancer and he goes flying. He tells him that he is not Landon Kirby and that this is his world. And the necromancer replies that he is Malivore. The necromancer says that he can give him anything that he wants if he just says one word. A monster falls down and Jed is keeping score and starts bickering with Caleb and it's hilarious. I love how these two are always bickering. If it's not about a girl, it's always about something. <laughs> there is a flash of light that comes from the monster and everything and everyone disappears. Malivore says that he knows what he wants from the necromancer and that he wants to die. He opens his mouth wide to eat him and the zombie dragon comes and blows fire on him, causing him to freeze. Hope rushes on the field when she touches him and he turns to ashes. Alaric and Sheriff Max says it's that there aren't any signs of Hope and Landon and the monsters are all gone as if they weren't even here. The necromancer is gloating about Landon and Hope slices his head off. Landon comes back to life as himself and kisses Hope. She asks him how did he come back to life and she thinks it has something to do with the flash of light they saw. Alaric and Sheriff Max are talking in the classroom. He says that Hope, Landon, and the monsters got sent to a prison world. The flash of light that they saw explains why they were there one minute and gone the next. He says that if you're banished to a prison world and you die, you come back to life. Hope and Lander are talking with the necromancer's 
alive severed head about how to get out of the prison world. Hope tells Landon that she has a plan, and Landon kicks the necromancer's severed head across the field the same way he did with Chad's head several episodes ago. <laughs> that was hilarious. Josie, Lizzie, and Alyssa are doing the spell, and MG says that he feels much better. Josie says that they created a new prison world and moved all the spells Alyssa linked to their world to it. She says they are both free of the necromancer. Alyssa thanks them both. Josie apologizes to Alyssa again, and she accepts, and they all do a group hug. Hope and Landon are at the crypt. And he asks her if she's sure about the plan. She says she doesn't know, and that is where the trust comes in. The necromancer puts his head back onto his body, and Malivore shows up and chases him. Hope says that her blood is toxic to Malivore, and that he should spit them both back out in the real world. They both jump into the pit, kiss, and they begin to sink. Hope wakes up, and Landon shows up with her favorite milkshake. He tells her that this is not the anniversary date he had planned, but he asks her for one dance. They dance, and then they sleep together. Alaric and Sheriff Mac are having a drink. She says... He is not going to let her remember any of this, and Caleb comes in, telling them of all of who he has compelled. Alaric tells Caleb to compel her to remember everything, and that it is her decision to make. MG is looking at the Ascendant, and Alicia shows up. MG tells her that it's easier to believe in others than to believe in yourself. He says he gave her a chance to make the right decision, and he asks her if she will return the favor. He says that he understands what she is going through romantically and that he's been treating her the same way that lizzie treats him he says he wants to give them a shot and they kiss and my girl lizzie she sees all, she sees them kiss and i'm just heartbroken for her i'm like oh like just when lizzie started to finally realize that she has feelings for mg of course the writers do this to make this happen which is like ugh. lizzie tells josie that she missed her window with mg and that she always thought that he would be there waiting for her to be okay josie apologizes and lizzie mentions how she's happy that he is okay she thanks her for her help Josie tells her that she is not ready to do magic and that she put it away again. She asks Lizzie to hold on to that for her and she agrees. She says the reason that she was even at Mystic Falls is because she wants to transfer there and live a non-witch life for a minute. She says that she will only do that but if she has Lizzie's support. Hope and Lander are lying down in the crib and they are talking about their first time. Hope says that she never knew that she could be this happy and that she gave up on it. She says that all she had to do was just let herself be with him. The episode ends with Landon throwing up, and he begins to sink and turn into black goop. To end this video, I'm going to do three quick things. First, my quick thoughts on the episode. Uh, this episode was okay. It was so-so. It definitely felt like a filler episode. I did enjoy Lizzie finally realizing her feelings for MG, but the fact that he is with Alyssa now, uh, I don't like that. Because <laughs> I'm Team Mizzy. Handon was really cute in this episode. Second, my th quick thoughts on the promo for next week. It looks really, really good, and I'm excited. Third, I'm going to do a quick rapid fire of the episode. So, my favorite scene, Josie teasing, teasing Lizzie for pinning, pining for MG. It was such a cute sisterly moment, and I loved her. Lizzie just finally realizing her true feelings for him. Favorite quote, I can stick that head of yours in some very unpleasant places by Hope. And I would have loved to have seen that, by the way. <laughs> uh, favorite look, Josie. Favorite duo, Caleb and Jay getting out of their car and just looking so cool. That was just such a cool, cool shot. My WTF moment, Alyssa and MG kiss, just when Lizzie finally starts to realize her true feelings. The writers would have MG get with someone, and of all people, he gets with Alyssa. So, I'm just hoping that hopefully, maybe down the, down the line in the season, that Missy will get together, finally. I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Legacies. Let's keep the conversation going, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. I review other shows like All American and Riverdale, and some other stuff. And if those interest you, please check those videos out on my channel, and subscribe. Hope you guys have a great day, stay safe, and see you guys next week.